Hello, my crafty friends. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Do you want to see all types of craft tutorials? If so, you are in the right place. Today I'm going to do a very unique mixed media canvas. I'll be doing some decoupage, some stenciling, 3D effects using clay and silicone molds, and lots and lots of rhinestones. If you're ready, let's make a mess. I'm starting out by getting my canvas ready. I bought some corrugated cardboard in the paper section of Hobby Lobby, and I'm ripping it so I don't have a straight edge, and then I'm going to glue it to the canvas with some Mod Podge. I'm going to make this look like a very old wall that is just falling apart. Stick with me till the end. This is going to be really fun. Now I'm going to add some bricks, which we are going to make beautiful in a little bit. I'm using some caramel colored powdered grout and mixing it with a little bit of water. If you don't want to mix any grout, you can just purchase the pre-mixed grout and that will work just the same. I'm laying down the stencil on the canvas and spreading the grout over top of it. When I remove the stencil, you'll see a nice brick pattern. And I'm doing this a little messy because it's an old, messy, distressed wall. If you watch any of the home improvement shows on HGTV, you'll know exactly the look I'm going for here. It's going to look like a lath and plaster wall. I am spreading a little pre-mixed white grout all over the corrugated cardboard and wiping a little bit off to achieve the look I'm going for. Make sure you stick around to the end of this video. I'll be showing you how to use Mod Podge's dimensional liquid. It's actually pretty cool. And I'm sloppily getting it on the bricks deliberately. This is going to be a really messed up wall, but beautifully messed up. Okay, now we're going to hang some wallpaper. I bought this beautiful paper at Hobby Lobby in their scrapbooking section. And it looks just like wallpaper to me, so it is going on my wall. I am ripping it into pieces so it won't have a sharp cut edge. Then I'm figuring out where I want each piece and gluing it on the canvas with Mod Podge. I'm letting some of the wallpaper hang over the edge of the canvas, just for effect. Now that I have it figured out where I want each piece to go, it's time to start gluing. I'm spraying each piece with water before I add the Mod Podge. It makes the paper more pliable and much easier to work with. Where are you watching from today? I'm filming from Las Vegas, Nevada in the United States. I'm taking the edge of this piece, making sure it's covered with Mod Podge and rolling it around a paintbrush handle. When it dries, it'll look like the wallpaper is peeling. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends. Shall we make these bricks look amazing? Okay, well if that's what you want, let's do it. I'm going to put some gilding on the bricks. I'm brushing on the adhesive where I want the gilding to stick. Once it dries, it will be clear and very sticky. If you're enjoying this video, let me know by leaving a comment. 
I answer 100% of the comments I receive. And I really love hearing from all of you. I'm putting some of the adhesive on the side edges of the canvas. I want some of the gilding there too. These gilding flakes are absolutely gorgeous. They are gold, copper, blue, and a dark orange. I'm using my tweezers to grab the flakes and lay them on the adhesive, then brushing with a soft brush to remove any extra. Brushing also makes sure the flakes are fully on the adhesive. Make sure you watch this video till the end. We're going to be doing some pretty cool magic with Mod Podge. I'm sponging a little beige paint that matches the wallpaper around all the edges of the canvas. And I'm carefully avoiding the gilding and wallpaper that's hanging over the edges. I waited a couple of hours for the adhesive to dry and now I'm going to put the metal leaf sealer everywhere that the gilding is. I'm adding some clear gloss to just the bricks. I'm going to antique them and it works a lot better on a shiny surface. The gloss coat is dry, so it's time to antique those bricks. The antiquing will make the grooves between all the bricks stand out. Right now, you really can't see them very well. I mixed a little bit of antiquing medium with some water. I prefer this solution to be a little watery. I'm brushing it on and then wiping it off with a cloth. It'll come off the surface, but stay in all the grooves, which will make all those bricks stand out really nice. I'm also antiquing under all the edges of the wallpaper that are hanging off the edge. I'm giving all the wallpaper a coat of Mod Podge. I'm going to do some antiquing on the front of the canvas, so I need to protect the paper since it isn't sealed yet. I'm avoiding the bricks, but getting the paper that's hanging over the edge. I'm going to antique around the edges of the paper to make them stand out. And again, I'm mixing water with the antiquing medium. I'm going very carefully just under the edge of the paper. Because of the corrugated cardboard underneath, it lifts up just a little bit. I'm also making sure I get the antiquing under and inside of where I curled the paper. After all the paint was dry, I sprayed the entire canvas with a clear gloss spray.
Okay, now it's time to start making some pretty stuff. I'm going to put some gold vinyl on a piece of cardboard and this will become my chandelier. I'm going to let my Cricut machine cut out the chandelier for me. I'm getting the gold covered cardboard set on the mat upside down with the gold side down. This is a little stiff and thick, so I'm taping it down to make sure Cricut doesn't choke on it. Okay, let's head over to the Cricut machine. This machine is truly amazing. I really couldn't live without it. And here we are, a beautifully cut out chandelier. Now that Cricut was so kind as to cut this out for me, I need to remove all the extra pieces in between everything. Because I put the gold vinyl on white cardboard, the edges are white. So I'm coloring all of the edges with a gold marker. I'm making a ceiling medallion to hang the chandelier from. I'm using Delight Clay. This is a really nice clay to work with. It's soft, easy to work with, and dries really fast. I'm going to paint the medallion, the leaves, and the curly cue, a light beige that matches the color of the wallpaper. Paint is dry and I'm painting on component number one of this two-step crackle finish on the medallion, the leaves, and the curly cue. Once step one turns clear, it's dry and then you can apply step two. Now that both crackle coats are dry, it's time to make those cracks stand out. There are some really great cracks on these. I'm applying the antiquing solution and wipe it off just like I did earlier. And the cracks are really going to show up nicely. Time to put this chandelier on our canvas. It's going to be a little tricky getting it on there, so I'm putting a couple pieces of transfer tape across the front to be my handles. When I'm ready, the transfer tape will come off very easily. I'm using clear gloss gel as a glue and painting it all over the back of the chandelier.
The gel goes on white, but dries clear. I upload a new video every Tuesday morning. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of them. Now it's time to make this chandelier look like a beautiful crystal chandelier. I am going to be decorating it with clear rhinestones and I'm using beacon gem tack to set them. This glue is specially formulated for things like rhinestones and pearls. I'm putting the glue on with a toothpick and then setting rhinestones with a rhinestone picker. It has a wax tip that makes this job so easy. I have some great videos coming up in the near future. I'll be doing a Paris themed mixed media canvas, a unicorn, and I'll turn a plastic cutting board into wood. You won't want to miss any of them. I'm gluing the ceiling medallion on at the top of the chandelier chain. I'm painting the little light bulbs white. And we're going to do a really cool technique a little later that will make them look like a real little light bulb. And I'm painting the little candles brown. We're going to do something fun with those later on too. some brown glitter glue that I got at the dollar store. Now I'm adding that over the brown paint on the candles so they sparkle a little bit. This project is all about the old, the weathered, and the sparkly. While the glitter glue is drying, I'm going to do a couple of other things to the canvas. I'm gluing the leaves and the curly cue at the bottom. I want to create an even more aged and weathered look to this piece. So I'm adding some iced espresso wax rub to the edges of the canvas. My rub is a little dried out, so I'm adding some water.
Well, here comes the fun that I promised you. Mod Podge makes a product called Dimensional Magic. It is so cool. It creates a 3D effect and looks like glass. I'm going to put it on the light bulbs and candles. Make sure you hold the bottle straight upside down when applying and the first drop that comes out of the tube will always be a bubble. So make sure your first drop always goes onto a paper towel. I'm moving it around a little bit to the edges with a pin. I put it on the candles first and I'll let that dry for a couple of hours before moving on to the light bulb. I want them to be separate and not run together. I'm adding the dimensional liquid to the little light bulbs now. And when it dries, they will look just like a real light bulb. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know by giving me a great big like. I've put together a playlist of some similar videos you may enjoy. Click the picture on the right to be taken directly to that playlist.